Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's broadcast, Expedite Regulated Documents in the Era of COVID-19, From Development to Trials and Manufacturing. I'm Rita Peters, Editorial Director of Pharmaceutical Technology, and I'll be the moderator for today's event. We're pleased to bring in this webcast presented by Pharmaceutical Executive and Pharmaceutical Technology and sponsored by DocuSign. I'd like to share a statement from our sponsor. DocuSign helps organizations connect and automate how they prepare, sign, act on, and manage agreements. As part of the DocuSign Agreement Cloud, DocuSign offers e-signature, the world's number one way to sign electronically. Today, more than 475,000 customers and hundreds of millions of users in over 180 countries use DocuSign. Got a few important announcements before we begin. This webcast is designed to be interactive and we encourage you to ask questions during the event. You can submit questions by typing them in the Q&A box, which can be found on the right-hand side of your screen. You can enlarge the slide window by clicking on the small square icon in the upper right-hand corner of the slide window, or you can hover your mouse over the lower right-hand corner and drag the window to the desired size. The slides will advance automatically during the event. If you have any technical problems viewing or hearing the presentation, just click on the question mark help widget in the dock at the bottom of your presentation window. Now I'd like to welcome today's speakers. Ellen Riley has over 30 years of life sciences and healthcare executive experience working in large global pharmaceutical companies, biotechnology organizations, and medical device clients. She's a passionate leader around digital transformation. Currently, Ellen is the Vice President, Global Partners for IQVIA Corporation, where she leads the partner ecosystem for technology business. Prior to IQVIA, Ellen was the General Manager for Life Sciences and Healthcare at DocuSign, working on driving the adoption into the industry, and she led the launch of their Part 11 product. Previously, she's held various industry leadership roles, including partner at PwC and vice president of enterprise business systems at Forest Pharma Pharmaceuticals. Ellen holds a bachelor's degree in computer science from LaSalle University and an MBA in international business from Drexel University. She's married to George Press and has two children, Alex and Teddy, and her dog, Penny. Ellen's vice president of the LaSalle Alumni Association and sits on the Dean of Arts and Sciences Advisory Board. She's also a member of SIM, DIA, and HBA associations. She enjoys spending time at Avalon Beach in New Jersey, where she proudly flies her LaSalle flag. Kirsten Schaub leads the commercial healthcare and life sciences sales team at DocuSign. Her team is focused on high-growth biotech and life science organizations, as well as healthcare providers of all sizes. She's been, she's been with DocuSign for 10 years, from the time DocuSign had a total of 100 employees, today where there are more than 4,000 DocuSigners. Kirsten started the healthcare and life sciences team at DocuSign and began relationships with Fortune 100 global pharmaceutical companies and even IQV's precursor, IMS Health as well as small startups. She lives in Seattle with her husband and two children. Christina Wong has a diverse background in regulatory affairs and marketing and now leads the healthcare and life sciences product marketing vertical at DocuSign. Before DocuSign, she began her career in the public sector where she covered healthcare issues for former California State Senator Christina Cahoe. Later, she advocated for improved local government ordinances. Her efforts contributed to one of the San Francisco Bay Area's largest East Bay Regional Parks. Christina's regulatory experience also includes being a product manager at Advanced Sterilization Products, a medical device subsidiary of Johnson & Johnson. Additionally, she spent more than four years as the second marketing hire at a water-focused tech startup that sought to bring big data to water utilities. When she isn't working, Christina goes on long urban walks with her family. She has an MBA from the University of Southern California and a bachelor's degree in environmental policy from UC Berkeley, where she graduated magna cum laude. So thank you all for being here today. 
Now I'm going to turn the presentation over to Christina. Thank you, Rita, for that uh, introduction. And good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today at this um, very timely and um, important webinar that we have for you today. Uh, as Rita mentioned, my name is Christina Wong, and I'm a senior product marketing manager at DocuSign, focused on the healthcare and life sciences industry. And today, uh, we brought together two industry experts to discuss how we've seen technologies being leveraged in today's uncertain environment. As we've seen COVID-19 alter our way of life, we've also seen a drastic acceleration of the need to digitize the entire value chain within life sciences. Today, we'll discuss some key trends that we've seen um, from our work and how companies have addressed critical business processes and compliance in light of COVID-19. So today, um, we're gonna kick off the discussion with an introduction um, on some industry trends that we've been seeing in the industry. And then I'll introduce our first speaker, uh, Kirsten Schaub with DocuSign, who will discuss more deeply about how life sciences industries have digitized these critical processes around their documentation process, particularly around being compliant through their 21 CFR Part 11 um, processes and the DocuSign uh, Life Sciences module. Second, we have Ellen Riley with IQVIA, who is going to discuss how they have virtualized clinical trials. And as we know, this is very important as we're working more remotely and contactlessly, they have been able to keep the patient at the center of this process by keeping them safe and remote, and she will be discussing about this very important technology and the partnership that DocuSign and IQVIA has put together to make this a reality. Uh, then I'll wrap it up with a conversation around some next steps to stay in touch, and then we'll save plenty of time for Q&A. So let's kind of dig right in around some of these trends that we've been seeing here. Um, and the first one that IQV and DocuSign has really seen is this huge importance around business continuity. Um, you will see that as we are striving to maintain this type of continuity in light of all of this uncertainty that's going around um, with openings and reopenings, as well as workforces that need to work remotely, um, operations have been impeded everyday ways that uh, life sciences companies rely on conducting businesses, business has changed. Um, and so we've seen that there's a huge need for technological systems to help and be able to help uh, expedite some of the decision making, as well as some of these processes as society continues to change. Um, the second and third trend, which is very interesting because it really is at the intersection of healthcare and life sciences. So the second trend that we've really seen is this need for contactless and remote offerings to be able to maintain business processes that keep patients at the center. So as patients and people need to reduce face-to-face -face contact um, with patients, uh, remote technology, such as wearables and telehealth, have become more important. And this is really the case where paperless patient admissions, enrollment, and having connected health monitoring are all key technologies to create a seamless patient experience while reducing face-to-face -face contact in this era of COVID-19. I think this, the third trend that we've seen is just the focus of patient centricity with telehealth. Uh, telehealth is here to stay. I know um, a lot of our attendees are actually uh, coming from healthcare, which is great to see many of you. And I know you've all been trying to figure out how do I get uh, my telehealth to work more seamlessly and cost effectively. And we've seen this too with just our general life sciences companies where they've had to monitor patients through at, during clinical trials through telehealth as well. Um, 
The fourth trend here is around digitizing healthcare provider relationships. We've seen this to be really important for life sciences companies to be able to maintain their relationships remotely. So for instance, we've seen a huge need um, from sampling, speaker agreements, along with physician onboarding, have all been critical HCP agreements that now need to be completed remotely and paperlessly. Um, Kirsten will speak directly to this use case in her section, but I do think it's important to really note that uh, the importance of maintaining these relationships now and even post COVID in a digital manner. And then lastly, a key trend that we've seen is just this need to maintain flexible operations and to be able to maintain drug availability. Um, we all know there's been disruption around the world and pharmaceutical or um, other life sciences operations are global in nature and very complex. Uh, there's been a trend to kind of try to localize a lot of these operations or add flexibility and stability. A lot of our customers at DocuSign actually came to us with the operations team driving the urgency because this is again part of business continuity in that they really need digitization to maintain the manufacturing of drugs and to keep clinical trials on track with the need for these drugs in these clinical trials. So we've seen that the future planning of being able to be digital at scale is really reliant on making these operations flexible and trying to be able to make sure that drugs are available throughout the world despite what's going on in individual countries and the disruptions that may be there. So overall, as you can see with all of these trends, that digitization is really about being able to improve flexibility, improve the remote nature of your interactions with patients and uh, providers and physicians all in light of being able to maintain business continuity. And so just to really bring this home into how, what this could mean for you and your business, um, I just wanted to just highlight a couple of these uh, interesting uh, use cases that came to our doorstep as DocuSign. And so we've seen these trends directly impact our business, as I think many of your businesses have seen within the first three months of the pandemic. Uh, essentially, we saw the world's leading biotechnology company come in and want to fast track a long outstanding project to validate DocuSign's 21 CFR Part 11 e-signature module that we were able to stand this up with our leveraging our full-time CSA support within two weeks that normally takes several months. And within these uh, few weeks of just standing this up, we had 8,000 users that had been provisioned and trained and to be able to use uh, e-signature for Part 11 uh, documents. And so another second example of how technology could really uh, be an interesting solution for these trends is that we saw a large healthcare provider in San Diego, California, conducted COVID-19 clinical research at that hospital, and that research center needed to enroll COVID-19 infected, pa infected patients into this clinical trial in a contactless way. Uh, the physicians didn't want to physically enter the patient's room. They didn't want to touch paper documents, nor the pens and papers that the patients had touched. And so they used DocuSign's 21 CFR Part 11 e-signature module to get these patients enrolled um, and to sign the patient consent all remotely without having to have patient-to-patient -patient or patient-to-staff contamination. And so I just wanted to just kick it off with some of these uh, ways that uh, technology can help address some of these trends. And now I'm going to turn it over to Kirsten Shaw, uh, DocuSign's AVP of the Commercial Healthcare and Life Sciences Vertical, to explain more about these pain points and the needs that our customers have expressed uh, to maintain business continuity in 
uh, during COVID-19. Thanks, Christina. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, as Rita mentioned, I've been with DocuSign for 10 years. Of course, a lot has changed during that time. You can see that highlighted a bit here um, of our growth over this time as a company. Um, you know, nearly 600,000 customers. Um, our billings revenue last year was over 1.1 billion. So a lot of growth there. But the interesting, I think, for this audience is it mirrors um, the growth acceptance adoption that we've seen uh, within life sciences over that time. Um, our focus today is how we dig is to dig into how we actually are helping customers throughout the life sciences industry. So I'm thinking about the actual as opposed to the theoretical. Uh, every one of these companies started their digital transformations focused on signatures. They've expanded, automated more aspects to drive even more value. So for that reason, we have 14 of the top 15 pharmaceutical companies as customers and 11 of the top 15 med device companies uh, as customers. Um, they all trust us to maintain digitization across their business. Uh, and as the industry continues to advance, it's become uh, imperative to trust in best in breed technology solutions like DocuSign so you can take the time to focus on what is actually matters, developing drugs, devices that save lives every day. So I think you all know this very well, the pharmaceutical value chain focused on uh, drug discovery, drug development, the manufacturing phase, distribution, as well as sales and marketing. Um, as we illustrate here, there are numerous agreements in each stage of the value chain. Um, all these agreements can be digitized and created into an efficient system that reduces turnaround time, improves efficiency, reduces costs. Um, you can see there is just a myriad of um, agreements across all of these um, processes. Obviously, a large number and a wide scope of agreements to be managed. So as we kick things off, I want to turn things over to Rita for a quick poll question, and then I'll dig in. Uh, thanks very much, Kirsten. Uh, yes, we want to get our audience involved um, by taking this poll question. You just make your selection directly on the screen and click Submit. So here's the question. Uh, what aspect of the pharmaceutical value chain is a top priority to digitize the paperwork and approval. So it, is it for clinical trials, manufacturing, commercialization, or something else? Again, what aspect of the pharmaceutical value chain is the top priority to digitize the paperwork and approvals? The clinical trials, manufacturing, commercialization, or another area? And I'm going to give you a few more seconds to make your selection and click Submit. If you are answering other, um, you can just put that um, me message in the chat. And let's look at the responses. Uh, so it looks uh, more than two-thirds are saying clinical trials is the critical area. Um, but there's also some interest in manufacturing and other areas, uh, which we will look at. Um, Kirsten, I'm going to turn it back over to you for any further discussion and to proceed with your presentation. Thank you, Rita. That's actually really interesting. I have several examples from clinical trials, so we'll dig into those in particular. Um, so um, at DocuSign, we say all companies have a system of agreement, whether they know it or not, and frankly, whether it's broken or not. Um, we think of the DocuSign agreement cloud segmented into four phases of the agreement process, shown here, prepare, sign, act, and manage. Um, you know, you can see here a few impacts of a broken system of agreement. So, for example, on the prepare side, the review process can be a significant challenge for many organizations and a, obviously risky and costly one at that. Um, now, obviously, on the sign, on the sign piece, if getting agreements signed without DocuSign, the turnaround time can be extremely lengthy. Um, we've also found that some old processes that relied on in-person signatures, which there were still plenty of those, even for our own customers that use DocuSign for many things, 
Um, this caused very significant delays and issues once everyone switched to remote work um, during the COVID period and the process for managing this you know, complex signing authorizations caused further delays. So that was an op that was an opportunity even for our current customers. And then finally, once signed in the manage phase, it's extremely difficult and painfully manual to be able to find completed contracts, understand complex clauses or areas of risk. And everyone in life sciences knows the importance and ongoing challenges of um, ensuring every uh, system you're using is uh, continues to be validated. So um, obviously DocuSign has long been a leader in the sign phase. Both our standard sign solution as well as DocuSign for Life Sciences, our 21 CFR Part 11 solution. I'm going to try here to put some focus around key areas for our customers during these past four months of COVID-impacted work. We saw an uptick in the use of DocuSign on Part 11 compliance side for quality documents, clinical testing documents, as well as patient consenting and trial accrual documentation. On the commercial side, many organizations increased use of DocuSign for contracts, manufacturing documents, as well as sampling. Um, example, one of our largest global pharmaceutical companies focused on uh, hemophilia, kidney disease uh, disorders, expanded use of DocuSign to enable business continuity within their clinical trial uh, development process. They launched our Part 11 product it allowed, really the focus was allowing executives to electronically sign critical clinical trial documents remotely so that the trials could continue to proceed once they were in a more remote uh, environment. I'm gonna dig into uh, more detail on a series of customers, and I'm gonna start um, on the clinical trials um, side of, of the, of the uh, world. Um, with the UCSF uh, Wisdom Breast Cancer Study. Sponsored by UCSF, it's been going on for several years already. Um, the interesting thing um, about this study is it's a large scale study, the goal being over time to enroll 100,000 women. Focus of the study is designed to answer the question for women, which is how often should I get a mammogram? Um, so again, goal to recruit, recruit 100,000 participants um, it's a, what, they, what they have built is a web-based solution that's built with salesforce.com. Women go through the process and enroll to participate in the study from the comfort of their own homes. Um, I believe now they have more than 30,000 participants already accrued into the trial. Um, using this process has also enabled them to recruit a more diverse and representative patient population than they otherwise could have done as well. Um, so on the um, uh, patient consenting um, study accrual side of things. Um, we also had on the clinical trial side, another customer um, looking to implement a more efficient process for their um, authorization to commence work and change in scope processes to do um, clinical trials for their own uh, partners and customers. Um, they utilize DocuSign's contract lifecycle management solution, which we refer to as CLM. Um, in point of fact, um, we acquired a company called Spring CM about two years ago, which is a, was a leader in contract lifecycle management, and we're, we brought them into the DocuSign family. This is an example of this use in DocuSign CLM. Um, before they implemented, this process was done manually, um, lots of emails, uh, sharing documents, tracking, reporting were very difficult, and the time from creation uh, to a fully executed um, agreement was um, painful, um, very long, and drawn out, and it lacked any type of an audit trail, which was important. Uh, DocuSign CLM implemented two processes. One was called change in scope, uh, which was built to support the, that contract creation and the routing. Um, the process that they implemented um, significantly reduced the amount of time from creation to fully approved, allowed project scopes to be changed much quicker and continue that work. Uh, the second use case was a process that they call authorization to work, but absolutely uh, extremely important for the customer and the core of their business. Um, they had to pull data from Oracle, from Salesforce, 
pull the most recent data um, into an agreement, and it was a really cumbersome process. Um, with the DocuSign uh, CLM solution, um, they built an automated process where the appropriate uh, approvers are designated based on the dollar value of the agreement, information is um, pulled with requesting, and all of it um, is pulling from both Oracle and Salesforce to, um, to build the agreement and go through the approvals process so VPs, um, heads, and area presidents can then um, to sign it. In the end, that workflow has um, sped up this process, providing um, single location for pulling information for both of these programs to incorporate it into a single, more seamless approval process. So moving across toward manufacturing, I want to focus on our customer, Boston Scientific. Um, Boston Scientific uses DocuSign across a very wide variety of sign use cases. Um, in fact, they were one of the first life sciences organizations to put a more complex center of excellence concept in place for DocuSign. Um, I'm going to focus here on the digitization of a process moving products from manufacturing sites to distribution centers, obviously absolutely key to everything they do. Um, in their old way before DocuSign, they had three forms with multiple people reviewing and multiple people signing. There, was, there wasn't any automation, and as a result, the products were um, not getting to market quickly enough. Um, moving this to DocuSign was truly a very significant business process change and was probably actually harder than the technology change itself. Uh, but through that process, they moved from three different processes that had 36 uh, discrete manual steps down to six automated stages with DocuSign. This resulted in a return on investment of uh, more than $4.4 million, and which is always important with DocuSign. It increased their not in good order rate. Um, by 48%, not good in or not in good order, meaning they had to rework because information wasn't completely filled out or a step was missed, et cetera. So that's also very uh, meaningful in the world of um, ROI with DocuSign. So moving a little toward commercialization, um, I want to focus on um, Allergan uh, and a sampling use case with DocuSign. Um, the ability to use DocuSign to do sampling remotely has been a key request from many of our customers, um, and the need has expanded, obviously, during this COVID period. Allergan has used DocuSign for sampling for quite a few years, especially where they have product which requires refrigeration and careful shipment during the process. I'm going to focus here on sampling over the past few months. Um, from recent, re recent research done by our fine partner, IQVIA, less than 20% of healthcare providers surveyed had an in-person meeting um, with a pharmaceutical or device rep in the first two weeks of June. Obviously, this makes all the sense in the world in terms of minimizing both in-person meetings and indoor office environments. Allergan's team, therefore, pivoted and DocuSign helped them to do so. Um, inside sales reps for the eye care products team are remotely meeting with those providers, either by a phone or on Zoom meeting. During the call, they ask if samples are needed. If the provider does need samples, the sales rep will initiate a DocuSign transaction for that sample request form. Um, the sales rep will also create um, the user account for the provider in their production DocuSign account for further um, for further um, identification authorization. Samples are shipped after the sample request form is signed. Afterward, Allergan will send another DocuSign uh, uh, document for that acknowledgement of receipt process. Providers have 30 days to send back that AOR form before they get a reminder. If they don't get back that uh, form, then those um, providers become ineligible to receive future sampling. So a much more efficient process um, in the time when, um, you know, in-person meetings are um, more minimized. Um, I'm going to switch now to McKesson, sort of staying one more 
on the commercialization um, side of things. Uh, McKesson has been a DocuSign customer for many years. I'm focusing here, though, on their use of AI technology um, that, that we acquired earlier this year called Steel Software. DocuSign has been partnered with Steel for their in, Intelligent Insights contract analytics platform for some time, and we are really happy to have them as part of the DocuSign family now. So here, uh, McKesson embarked on a multi-year sourcing and procurement initiative um, aim of improving efficiency, expanding that function. Early stage of this process was an employee survey focused on processes and tools. One of the outcomes of the survey was a consistent concern over lack of contract visibility. 60% of their internal uh, respondents said people were averaging from one to three hours per week searching for basic supplier contracts. They had multiple repositories, a complex and extensive contract review process, and a lack of tools and technology which would help them um, understand and track unique terms, clauses, obligations. Um, they chose and deployed the SEALS Discovery and Analytics platform, which is now part of the DocuSign Manage product suite. Once deployed, they were able to extract those custom non-standard clauses and keywords such as contract types, payment terms, ultimately resulting in what you see here, 75% uh, reduction in time to find contracts, 80% um, time saving um, in, in time to find a provision of a contract, and taking that one to three hours per week down to 15 to 20 minutes per week um, was, a, was, a, was a key value for McKesson. So that one on the commercialization and on the manage phase. So, I've tried here to highlight some very specific ways that DocuSign customers are using our tools within um, these times, all times, but especially in um, the COVID period. Um, now that you've seen various ways that life sciences companies are digitizing, um, I'd like to run through the specific products that they use. First, obviously, our e-signature e solution. Um, as well as the version of our e-signature solution called the Life Sciences Module, which is 21 CFR Part 11 compliant. Um, in conjunction with the Part 11 compliant solution, many of our customers do use our validator for life sciences to simplify that validation process. Um, there, these basically are automated reports that can be used as part of your own validation process, but is very helpful for many of our customers. Second, the DocuSign CLM product, as I mentioned, we acquired uh, Spring CM about two years ago. Um, this has added a huge suite of capabilities related to generating and managing agreements, redlining, workflows, approval. The next, the Intelligent Insights. Um, I was just highlighting that with McKesson. Um, on uh, using AI in this tool to improve future contracts as well as search pertinent contracts already in place. And lastly, uh, Gen for Salesforce, I wanna highlight that more specifically for the high growth, typically earlier stage life sciences companies who also use Salesforce as a platform. This is, uh, allows you to generate contracts, use a dynamic docu document creation engine, to create a more seamless integrated experience for documents, contracts, et cetera. So a lot of products there, a lot of ways that it can help. I hope that this was uh, helpful for you today. Um, moving on, I wanna uh, just kind of key in on um, this quote from our CEO, Dan Springer, focusing on how important our partner ecosystem is to, to DocuSign and what we're seeing. We have over 350 partners from IQVIA, USCM, Google, Microsoft, and many others. For us, including a partner, particularly a partner such as IQVIA, is instrumental to making digitization a reality, as well as to elevate DocuSign solutions at scale. IQVIA is one of our key partners they have fully integrated DocuSign within several of their products, which Ellen will be kind enough to speak to more here. IQVIA represents an example of that seamless integration that DocuSign has with a leading CRO 
in which together we create a patient-centric experience where clinical trial and the signing of the document happen within the platform without that patient having to know that they're using several technologies. Thank you very much for joining us today, Ellen. I'll turn things over to you. So thanks, Kirsten. Um, while my focus today is going to be really about our clinical trials business and our products that uh, use DocuSign for uh, making the patient-centric, I do want to share, um, Kristen, we did have a uh, another uh, commercial customer using our orchestrated customer engagement platform, CRM, that's going to be using DocuSign's Part 11 Life Sciences product integrated to do sample processing. Um, we found that out yesterday. So, uh, yes, the use goes from clinical, commercial, and manufacturing. So, uh, exciting times. So, uh, focusing on the clinical side, um, in you know, since the merger of IMS Health and Quintiles almost four years ago, IQVIA has been involved with one out of every five clinical trials in the world. And we've watched the, and have transformed our technology um, from what we call monolithic technology. You know, imaging and electronic data capture was the focus in, in the early part of the 2000s. Then there was a migration to cloud, the rolling out of lots of investigator portals, the transcelerate programs in the marketplace. Um, and the last five years really has been about focusing on to, to the feedback, you know, Christina brought up at the beginning around how do we integrate these mobile devices? How do we change how we do site startup? How do we change the compliance process? You know, in the end, you know, the, the goal is always that how can we make clinical trials go faster? And, you know, every day in the news we see how quickly can we move this vaccine through the clinical trial process to really get out there and change our public health uh, initiatives right now in this time. Um, we saw a lot of engagement on identity management, how to make sure the healthcare providers that are doing business around clinical trials are really those healthcare providers for the sites. So a lot of control for security, moving things into the cloud. Um, and we get a lot more demand that really customers are looking for plug and play solutions so as technology and businesses migrate, that I can change the way I do my clinical trial real time. So um, I give you started this journey in June of 2018. We announced that we were rolling out a virtual trial strategy. And that was really to ha do a better job of managing the patient experience the consent process, their experience in clinical trials. So clinical, the, the biggest challenge, as we all know, and I think you know, there's 80-some people sitting in the audience going, I run clinical trials all the time, is you know, enrolling patients. And enrolling patients, getting them to those sites, making sure that they adhere to the protocol for the clinical trial. And you know, so our whole strategy around virtual trials really was taking – the strategy of how we set up a clinical trial is not about the site setup, but it's about the patient journey in this. And how do you engage that patient through that journey? And so we put together this process that really would say that that patient could be remote, they could be going to a local visit, they could be working with um, someone uh, a, a monitor or a site investigator that is around the world. And so we really put together um, a technology platform to really to be able to support the patient as the center of this and really managing how we collect the information from that patient and their experience. Um, obviously, COVID has totally accelerated this. Um, IQV is involved with over 60 COVID trials at this point, and I don't know if you saw the news, but yesterday um, you'll see our press release announcing with AstraZeneca for AZD1222, the vaccine will be using our virtual trial technology to really help manage and bring the vaccine to the marketplace. So all this is how do we make that patient experience easy, compliant, collect information from healthcare devices, um, engage 
different people in the sponsor organizations with the local investigators and the protocols and support these trials globally and collect that information faster. And that is really how we've evolved all our technology in the clinical space. So how are we in integrating DocuSign? So IQVIA's strategy for bringing technology to the market is really a platform of platform strategy. So in the past, um, we used to build our technology, you know, custom code, build technology, and IQVIA made a strategy that said, we are going to look for market leaders, and we are going to build our um, technology um, solutions on those market leader platforms. So we're not doing the research about building a user interface, but we are actually adding value of knowledge around commercial processes or clinical trial processes. So we've bet on Salesforce, we've bet on MuleSoft, we've bet on DocuSign to really be those key solutions along with other technologies to bring value-added process knowledge to our platforms. And we picked DocuSign because really to change the way sponsors interact with sites, sites interact with patients, is to really make sure it's auditable, it's all going to be in the cloud, so making sure it meets GDPR requirements, it, it, it helps reduce turnaround so things happen quickly, you can see the you know certificates of completion, you can make sure that it's a validated solution because obviously that's required to meet all our GMP and GLP and GCM, GCP requirements. Um, so um, right now, DocuSign is built in for consent. It's built in for site documentation. We have additional SaaS platforms that are being released in September to the market, our mobile CRA products and our remote-based monitoring systems. And we have um, coming out uh, additional modules in our digital trial management systems that will all use DocuSign to handle um, the closed loop transactions, whether it's the sites, the patients, or, or the sponsors. So, you know, in summary, uh, leveraging this whole adoption of technology, you know, we are using those best practices and platforms out in the marketplace to change the consent, the interaction, um, the televisiting, you know, talking about telemedicine, um, but in the clinical space, you know, interacting and doing that from your home, um, consenting to all the documentation, the adherence of using the, the drug through the clinical trial. We're bringing this all together in the marketplace, um, you know, and especially around those 60 COVID trials we're doing. If you want to learn more, I know the slide talked about um, healthcare uh, provider and uh, remote detailing examples, but we have a lot of information around COVID-19 on our website. So go to IQVIA.com, and it really can help you with understanding what's going on in the clinical trial space, what's going on with healthcare engagement, whether you use our orchestrated customer engagement products or our virtual trials and clinical products, how you can do that from a digital perspective and bring that all together as we navigate these challenging times. So I will end there and turn it back to Christina. Thank you, Ellen, for that. Um, so I hope that you can see while COVID-19 um, has added a lot of uncertainty and complexity, there are technological solutions that are here and available to help and can help immediately. Um, you've, we've walked through today around how your peers and life sciences companies have conducted virtual clinical trials including contactless patient enrollment, digital contract lifecycle management, and just showing how digitization and scaling that can move beyond different pockets of your organization to now become at scale across entire companies. And to us, this is how we're viewing eventually a new normal where this vision that Ellen nicely laid out in her different models of digitization that we're all moving forward um, on these curves to make uh, this a reality and to continue to keep patients at the center. 
And to us, this has never been more important than now. And we've seen that uh, being able to do this during this COVID-19 pandemic, is just important to help us address this crisis, uh, your company's continuity, your operations, and being able to make sure that your value chain is resilient and being able to uh, adhere through all of these multiple changes that are happening now and in the future. So before we go on to Q&A, I wanted to make sure that you please keep in touch with us. There are a lot of resources on uh, DocuSign and IQVIA's website. As Ellen mentioned, they have wonderful uh, research that has been done really around um, drug therapies and how this has changed um, in light of COVID-19 and just a lot of great uh, primary research. On DocuSign's website, you'll find uh, really uh, good uh, resources on 21 CFR Part 11. We have a white paper. Uh, we will get to this question around GDPR that uh, someone put in, but we have a white paper as well uh, right there called Navigating Global and U.S. Compliance Standards that particularly talk about GDPR, BCRs, um, et cetera. And we have um, other demo videos. Uh, while we are all virtual, please uh, keep in touch. We are adding a lot more specific uh, life sciences webinars to our website. Uh, right now, we have one that's really, I think, interesting for this group around HR's digital transformation. It's around how um, you can digitize that process when you're needing to bring on new employees. And we have a lot of good webinars around, you know, four strategies for data privacy law readiness, and three steps to maintain business continuity, and those are on our website as well. So um, at, when the Q&A ends, which we're gonna jump to right now, uh, please stay on for our survey. It helps us understand what additional topics um, we, you would wanna hear from us, and it helps guide us, as well as please be in touch, uh, you have our speakers' emails uh, right there. So let me turn it over now to Rita for Q&A. All right, thank you very much, uh, Christina and Kirsten and Ellen for the presentation. We are gonna get to audience Q&A and take your questions. So just a quick reminder, you can submit your question by typing it in the Q&A box, which is located on the right-hand side of the presentation window. So uh, first question. Um, so how are GDPR requirements managed within DocuSign? I, I'll take that one. This is Kirsten Schaub. So we have made uh, a major focus on uh, GDPR compliance over the last uh, several years. So we have uh, robust plans um, around um, all, of, all of those areas, you know, our entire solution, it's uh, compliant, trusted, secure. Um, we put a lot of focus on the reliability, integrity, and availability of the records and signatures, um, and obviously fully compliant with eSign, UETA, and HIPAA requirements. Um, Christina, do you want to add anything more about GDPR? Um, I think that's more your yeah. area than mine. Sure. Um so while GDPR outlines requirements, it doesn't indicate exactly how companies should meet those requirements. And so companies may propose any solution to meet those requirements. Um, one popular way that uh, companies are doing this is through the BCRs, which lays out how companies uh, meet every requirement within the GDPR regulation. DocuSign has outlined its BCRs and got them approved by the Irish Data Protection Commission. And as part of that, our customers are data processors because they own the data being requested and managed on behalf of EU citizens. So when a document is put in the DocuSign e-signature cloud, EU citizens are asked to fill out personally identifiable information then data processors manage that information. Uh, at DocuSign, we store that data within EU data centers, and only the sender or the signer has access to that data. 
So once there's no longer a business need for that data, DocuSign has tools to help the data processors redact or delete data upon the request from an EU citizen. So those are some of the ways that uh, we're making sure that we're compliant uh, with GDPR standards. And we have more information, as I said, on that white paper, as well as on our uh, trust center on our website. All right. Thanks to both of you. Uh, here's the next question. Since this is a cloud solution, can you speak to the active and passive controls applied to ensure data security and integrity? Ooh, we're going really deep on this one. Um, I think so to dig into the exact specifics of what you're looking for, we have a white paper um, that's on our website, or if you email me, I can point you and find the right one for you that really digs into each of the controls. Obviously, with the customers that we work with um, and the global nature of our business in life sciences, as well as other areas such as financial services, et cetera, this is critical for, for us. So I want to give you the precise right answer. So reach out to me and I'll get you the right, um, the full white paper for all the details. Okay, great. Here's our next question. So how do you ensure that site documents are signed by the appropriate individual? Uh, identity with this, uh, is there an identity ver verification? Yes. Yeah, so our the IQVIA technology products um, integrate to our healthcare um, our one key uh, data set, um, as well as other data that we have around healthcare providers. Um, we also have identity management software. Um, we do have certain customers that want to integrate to their identity management. Uh, processing on how they manage um, the HCPs and the, and the uh, uh, investigators, and so we can do that as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Here's the next question. So can you tell me how your companies have specifically helped companies during the COVID-19 pandemic? Um, uh, why don't I help. jump in and then, Go Kirsten, first. you can yep. – obviously, you know, we're involved with, with – uh, dozens of clinical trials. Um, we're also helping uh, pharmaceutical companies and med device companies do remote detailing using our orchestrated uh, customer engagement product, our CRM product, um, to handle remote detailing, sampling. Uh, we're working on uh, collecting data to you know, support sponsors um, in their analysis of, of vaccine uh, information to make decisions on where to hold trials. We, you know, IQV is one of the largest data healthcare data providers in the world. We have huge data lakes, um, and we are, uh, you know, offering, you know, selling our data to uh, help organizations make better choices on how they do their clinical trials. How do they enroll patients to uh, get the vaccines through the process? So I'll talk a little bit to the DocuSign side of that question. So um, I, I kind of highlighted a couple things in the presentation. A lot of, on the life sciences side, a lot of the um, increase in use and needs we saw was about expanding the Part 11 product to more people for more use cases. We had a lot of uh, life sciences customers that have uh, DocuSign validated for Part 11, but they were only using it for some things, and if they had other maybe um, smaller needs, maybe they kept those paper because they were all in one place. A lot of those decisions in terms of, oh, we'll worry about that one later, we'll worry about that one later, got quite sped up. So a lot, a lot of, a lot of just um, organic growth there. I will talk just briefly about where we actually spent a huge amount of our time over these uh, last months, and that was on healthcare providers. So we saw everything from um, uh, behavioral health uh, psych psychiatrist office moving that to telehealth and adding DocuSign as a consenting HIPAA consent patient registration as to that process, um, to small uh, specialty providers, to all the way up to and including um, hospitals for contactless um, mobile COVID testing sites. 
So a lot of work that we did with our Pure Sign product um, was about taking a paper form and overnight or over a weekend helping customers to turn that into a digital process. And where how we feel about that is um, those aren't, you know, there were a few that maybe are one-time use cases, but for the most part what we saw was a acceleration of um, digitization trends um, that, that will continue. Hope that's helpful. All right, thank you. Next question. Um, so what is IQV's process for review of sor source documents that are not shared via access to the AMR? What software do you use? I don't know that answer. Um, if you want to send me that question and uh, ellen.riley at ikevia.com, I can get that details for you. Okay, great. Uh, next, so um, how have companies validated these technologies quickly to actually keep clinical trials on track during the pandemic? Uh, I can speak to the DocuSign side and then Ellen, you can see if there's anything you want to add. Um, so um, what we have seen is um, some cus customers that were already validated um, expanded use. In addition, we saw um, a lot of, of organizations use that validator for life sciences product that we have that I mentioned earlier to speed up the process. Um, you know, DocuSign can be de is, a, is fairly straightforward. Um, the DocuSign sign solution is, is fairly straightforward and can be deployed in, in a, at least starting in a very simplistic way, which eases some parts of the validation process. And then adding our um, validator product to that um, was, a, was a great help. Um, Ellen, you want to add anything more specific to IQV on that? Yeah, so we, we've included all the DocuSign uh, test scripts into our release packages. So as we uh, release and update our software, we re-execute the qualification test scripts. All right, thank you. We have time for one more question before we wrap up. So what are some future use cases for DocuSign and IQVIA? Um, so on the DocuSign side, an area of um, focus for, for us as we grow is about um, interoperability into EMRs. Um, that is um, a really critical area. It does impact clinical trials because obviously, um, you know, pulling the patient data from the EMR, there's, that patient record is absolutely critical. There's a lot of growth and opportunity for us to improve what we can do now um, to what it will look like in three years. Um, I think I'm sure everyone on this call is very aware of how much fact is still in healthcare, and um, it need not be so. Um, even in the public health side of things, there was an article yesterday in the New York Times talking about how the faxing process uh, coming back and forth through public health was delaying, um, you know, COVID reporting and um, the processing of, of tests, which is obviously something we can do a lot better with. So that's one area um, that I personally spend a lot of time on. Ellen? So from from IQVIA's perspective, I mean, we are bringing technology to the marketplace. We, you know, we have over a, a billion dollars worth of sales and technology products from the clinical site. We just brought out uh, our pharmacovigilance platform uh, in the market. Uh, we're bringing additional uh, clinical modules, as I mentioned, are coming to the market in September and later in this year. We've got a new RIM product. Um, our orchestrated customer engagement product, we've added uh, healthcare uh, compliance and engagement. Um, as we evolve our, our product journey, um, we look at you know, who our key platform providers are, and obviously there's electronic signature uh, embedded in all those uh, business processes. So uh, stay tuned. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, we are out of time. I want to thank the audience for t attending and participating in today's event. And I'd like to thank our sponsor, DocuSign, for making today's webcast possible. Quick, quick reminder, our audience members, 
Excuse me. Quick reminder to our audience members, we have a brief survey from our sponsor. It's on the right side of your screen, and we invite everyone to participate. You'll receive an email alerting you when this webcast will be available for replay. I invite you to forward that announcement to your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. So thank you again for joining us, and have a good day.